Hello everyone, it's Mrs. Wallace. I'm just gonna do this uh, free response question uh, challenge problem that I posted on Schoology. It's like a little bit of review and I'll try to uh, note a few um, kind of common mistakes and also uh, just kind of do the problem that's there on Schoology. It is a unique uh, free response question because it reflects an increasing uh, cost industry. It also includes a section which is dedicated to a marginal cost shift. So I thought this might be a good way to get some of the uh, you know parts that are a little bit more complicated about this topic across. Uh, so the very first thing is suppose that tomatoes are produced in a perfectly competitive increasing cost industry uh, in a long run equilibrium with identical firms. Okay, so uh, first thing we're always going to do is do our side by side graphing. We're gonna have our price and our quantity. This is our price uh, in the market and our quantity in the market our supply curve and our demand curve. Uh, the firm, which is a price taker, is taking a price, which is gonna be the firm's MR curve, also equals the price. Remember, Mr. DARP. Uh, this is the marginal cost curve, okay? And if it's in the long run, this is a firm that is gonna have an ATC curve shaped kind of like a bowl. Note the minimum point uh, where MC is intersecting ATC. It's at the minimum point. Uh, we can also label uh, the quantity uh, for the firm and uh, the price for the firm, okay? So we've actually done the first part of the question. This is part A. It's also really nice to always label for your AP readers uh, so that they know exactly uh, what it is that you're doing, okay? Um, if we were to look at part B, and I'm just gonna uh, squish it uh, here just so we can um, get it on the screen. For part B, is the firm allocatively efficient as I graphed it? Um, and so because this is the firm, and this is the market, okay? They could ask about either, but in this case, they're asking about the firm. Is the firm allocatively efficient, okay? And the answer is yes, okay? And if I was writing a full sentence here, I'd say the firm is allocatively efficient. Uh, why is that the case, okay? Because price is equal to uh, MC um, at profit maximizing quantity. Okay, so what do we mean by that? At this quantity of QF, okay, if I kind of travel upwards, um, I can note that the um, uh, price, okay, which is PF, <laughs> is exactly equal um, to uh, the uh, MC at this particular quantity, okay? And whenever P is equal to MC, we know that this is basically saying marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost, okay? We know marginal cost and kind of what that is all about. We're using price to reflect uh, marginal benefit um, because marginal benefit tells us how much additional benefit um, do we get from e each next uh, tomato well, the price that people are willing to pay, that is the marginal uh, benefit, okay? And in this case, it happens to be constant uh, and price happens to be equal to MR, but the formula in all of our markets for allocative efficiency will be when price is equal to marginal cost. And that happens to be the case. Uh, so the answer is yes, okay? Um, the uh, question C, which I'm also gonna squish on here all the way uh, down here, uh, has to do with the long run uh, supply curve. Okay, the long run supply curve, uh, what does it look like in this um, market? Okay, and now this is asking about the market. I cannot just point uh, to this because this might be the short run uh, market graph. Uh, I want to know the long run um, shape. Okay, um, because I know that this is an increasing uh, cost industry, I automatically know by definition that my long run supply curve is gonna be upward sloping, okay? Anytime you have an increase in cost industry, long run supply curve is upward uh, sloping. That is definitional and I can describe that. It is upward sloping. Uh, if I have to explain that, I can explain that by just saying in an increase in cost industry, as more firms enter into the market, over the course of, you know, kind of uh, greater and greater and greater, uh, you know, as we kind of have more and more and more long run uh, equilibriums, we end up with the ATC increasing um, because there is always going to be uh, a little competition uh, for resources. So that is uh, what an increasing cost uh, market is. And by definition, uh, increasing cost market suggests long run supply curve will be upward sloping.
Okay, so let's continue a little bit. I'm just going to erase some of this so we can uh, continue. Uh, but we're going to look at the next part of the free response uh, question. Again, this is on um, Schoology. It's in the update section. I just kind of put it there so everyone could get a little bit uh, more practice. Um, so let's take a look at the rest of the question. Okay, but I'm going to try to keep, you know, our basic market and firm uh, graphs uh, pretty much are the same. So in uh, part... Uh, D, okay, we're going to be uh, moving actually from the long run to the short run. So this is kind of the expected uh, way that these problems go, you know, short run, and then I'll end up back in the long run, okay? Uh, but the way that this one uh, works, we're going to assume incomes increase, but instead of incomes increasing and there being an increase in demand, which would be typical if it was a normal good, um, this is going to be an inferior good. So even though incomes increase, I know I'm going to see a reduction in demand. Uh, this question is very much like one you had on your free response uh, question the other day. Um, this now gives us a new price in the market. Okay, so not uh, surprisingly, um, with the decrease in demand, the price in the market has decreased. Um, the quantity in the market has also uh, decreased and we see a new price for the firm. So the firm now has a new uh, MR curve and a new price uh, for the firm. Keep in mind that the old MR curve is just kind of gone. <laughs> it's like really uh, disappeared. Um, it's easier almost if you erase it, uh, but kind of remember that the white MR curve is kind of the one and only uh, MR curve for the firm. Uh, because we have this new price, we now have a new uh, quantity, whereas before the quantity used to be here at QF. Now we have QF1, and the reason uh, it has changed is because now that the price is lower, we're going to see the MR equals MC, profit maximizing quantity, is actually going to be at a lower uh, quantity. Uh, not only that, because the price is um, lower at PF1 than it was at PF, um, I know that at this quantity of QF1, I have an ATC that's going to be at that dollar amount, a little bit greater than the original uh, price, okay? Uh, you know, let's kind of imagine that this is the ATC um, and we're going to have a uh, loss, which I can put uh, in blue, of uh, this um, area right here. Okay, the per unit loss uh, would be kind of where this uh, red line is, this red vertical line is, um, but the blue uh, box gives us the area of that loss. Okay, and if I'm shading it, um, I might just note it, you know, like that. That is the loss for the firm because the ATC at the quantity QF1 is greater than MR1 or the price, okay? Uh, so in the short run, we have a loss and the firm just kind of sits there in the short run making losses. And because the firm is a representative firm, you know, all the firms in this market are making losses. Um, at a certain point in time, we know that firms are going to leave, okay? Um, and if this was constant costs, what would happen is the supply curve would shift left and firms would leave up into the point where uh, the price was exactly equal to um, P, uh, <laughs> the original price, the red uh, MR curve for the firm. Um, and, you know, in that case, uh, the um, long run position would be exactly the same as you started, okay? In this case, you know, it's not. In the increasing cost uh, industry, and this is a little bit uh, different than the one we did in class because in this case, it's increasing costs, uh, but we also have a loss, so firms are leaving. Um, so, you know, it's an increasing cost industry, as the firms are leaving, uh, what's happening to the ATC, the ATC is decreasing, okay? Because firms are leaving, there's a lot less competition for resources, so basically uh, the ATC is decreasing, okay? So if um, we kind of uh, imagine that um, the uh, firms are leaving, <laughs> leaving, uh, leaving, let's say, uh, to here, okay? And uh, as uh, that is happening, um, we see ATC decreasing, okay? So maybe ATC goes to here, okay? So that shift is not going to be as grand as it was uh, before, but we're going to end up with something like that. Regardless, in the long run, the firm will be making zero economic profit and will be breaking even, okay? It might be a little bit uh, tricky to graph that, 
but um, this is the question. We don't have to graph it in Part D. What is going to happen to the number of firms in the industry uh, as it moves um, to the uh, long run? Okay, well, from S1 to S2, uh, we know that the quantity of firms in the market will decrease, okay? Um, the next part of the question is um, what will happen to the ATC of the firm? ATC uh, will decrease. What is going to happen uh, to um, the shape of the long run supply curve? Okay, we'll just note it over here. As before, the long run supply curve is going to be upward sloping. That's definitional increase in cost. That's the way the long run supply curve is going to look. Okay, you don't have to even graph it, think about it, um, derive it. You just know it's going to be upward sloping. Um, the very last part of this question uh, will take a second to do. It relates to uh, marginal costs. Okay, for the very last part of this question, which is um, actually part E, I wanted to do this question because it relates to the marginal cost curve, and I think there have been a lot of questions uh, about that. Um, here's our market for tomatoes, demand and supply, you know, quantity and price. Uh, always, you just get into the habit of this. Um, and then here is our firm graph. Here's our MR price, marginal cost. It's kind of a wimpy marginal cost curve and our ATC, okay? We're back in uh, the long run, okay? So we're in the long run and we're at a normal profit, okay? Breaking even. Uh, the question here becomes um, all of a sudden, right? And there's always gonna be, you know, a shakeup to the long run. This is just a consistent cycle for firms in perfect competition. They're in the long run, then they're in the short run. They're in the long run, then they're in the short run. And the name of the game is try to have profit uh, for as long as you can hold on to it, okay? Um, I know I mentioned this in class, but, you know, firms that are uh, in the perfect competitive uh, model. We don't really have a perfect example of that, but you know, firms like agricultural products, uh, like milk, for example, uh, we tend to see these kinds of firms really um, not advertise individually. Uh, we really, you know, they can't control their price or their own uh, individual uh, demand, uh, but they can try to increase um, the demand for their uh, products. And they overall for the entire market, like the Got Milk uh, campaign or, you know, the soybean growers of America uh, can lobby together uh, to try to enable consumer demand to increase and also to address uh, things that they might want, like, uh, you know, reductions in costs, reductions in tariffs, or maybe increases in subsidies, because that's all stuff that's affecting uh, the marginal cost curve. Um, so, you know, I think I noted this in class that the marginal cost curve, okay, tends to be something that can shift uh, only if it affects a uh, variable cost, okay, so a variable cost uh, change or anything that's per unit, okay, would actually shift uh, MC. If it's something that's like a fixed uh, cost issue, a lump sum subsidy, lump sum tax, uh, those are things that do not affect uh, the MC curve uh, at all, okay? Um, so you could have something, and I'll just use this as an example, you could have something like uh, an increase in minimum wage. Uh, what would happen in that case? You would have an increase in the marginal cost. You would also have an increase in your ATC, okay? And just kind of note when that happens, two things happen. First of all, for the firm, this means a different price than you were before. Uh, so you're at, I'm sorry, a lower quantity, not a lower price, a lower quantity than you were before. Uh, before you were at Q1 when you were breaking even. Now all of a sudden, because marginal cost shifted, your profit maximizing quantity is going to be a little bit lower. Um, and also at that quantity, right, we have a um, price that hasn't changed, but an ATC uh, that has, right? So we have a firm now uh, that's making a loss and we could shade that, okay? And when Whenever you have a marginal cost curve that is shifting upward, meaning marginal costs are increasing, uh, we know that the firm's supply curve, okay, which is the MC curve above ABC, so if I put my ABC curve uh, in here, okay, and we said this part of the marginal cost curve above minimum AVC, if that's the firm's uh, supply curve, when the marginal cost curve shifts, um, it's going to have an impact on the market uh, supply curve. 
this market supply curve is an aggregate, right, of all of the firm's marginal uh, cost curve. So this supply curve uh, will shift left, and yeah, the firm will take a new price, uh, but you don't have to really graph it uh, that far uh, into things. The really big uh, takeaway is if you have um, some type of change in variable costs, your marginal cost curve will shift. It's either going to increase, go leftward and upward, or it's going to decrease, you know, rightward and downward. Um, and that is going to have an impact on the change in quantity. Most of the questions, you know, on the AP exam about variable cost uh, shifts in um, the uh, um, a, you know, on, on like free response questions and things like that, you know, have to do with um, what happens to quantity as a result of marginal cost. And sometimes you'll see the lump sum example. That's like a trick question because something that's a lump sum subsidy or a lump sum tax does not shift the marginal cost curve. Okay, so there's never a change to quantity as a result of that. And there's also not a comparable shift in the market supply curve. Okay. Okay, last part, this is the part that was on the free response question. So now I'm looking at part E, okay? I've got my market and my firm. And this one I, I thought was useful to do because it's just a little bit different and it's not always uh, so intuitive. Uh, so I just wanna make you aware of it. It's something we spend a little bit more time on uh, when we get to the labor market, uh, but it's useful to bring it up uh, now, okay? So I have my uh, quantity for my firm, my price, you know, my MR, and let's say we're at um, uh, normal profit, uh, we're in the long run, and we're breaking even, okay? The way that um, problem D uh, looks, and I don't have to graph it, I just have to answer some of these questions, um, but I'm looking at E on the free response question that I put up on Schoology. Uh, the firm and the market are in the long run, and then all of a sudden, a machine that produces tomatoes at a higher rate is available, okay? Uh, this is another example that can affect the marginal cost curve. In addition to costs actually increasing or decreasing, productivity changes can also occur. It does have an effect on costs. You know why? Because I can actually uh, have the exact same resources produce more than I could before. So my marginal cost is actually less, okay? So I might see my marginal cost uh, decrease as a result of this technology, assuming that I buy it or whatnot. And let's imagine that my ATC, you know, is going to look something like that. My minimum point is a little sketchy, but let's like pretend that it's there. Um, and that's our minimum point. Um, but now I have uh, my firm. Okay, so the questions on this, you know, what changes uh, will we have for the representative firm's cost curves? Okay, we've graphed that. Um, and we're asked about the firm. We're not asked about the market. So I'm not interested right now in showcasing what happens to the market supply curve, although that would also shift um, what will happen to the output for the firm compared to the previous long-run equilibrium. Well, in the previous long-run equilibrium, I was at um, Q for my quantity. Now, because I have this technology that's making me, uh, you know, kind of create a lot more with the same exact uh, resources, um, I'll notice that my new MC curve and the MR are going to give me a quantity uh, that's much greater, okay, right where uh, that Q is, okay, right here, uh, that's the new quantity. So, you know, the answer to uh, E, you know, 2I or whatever is that um, I'm going to have an increase in my quantity. And why is that? Uh, because my marginal uh, cost curve decreased as a result of the technology um, and my profit maximizing quantity decreased, where MR equals MC is less. And then next to the last thing I have to do is label the firm's short run uh, supply curve uh, using points A and B uh, in order to do this. And I've got this new kind of white, you know, MC curve. Uh, what I might do is put in my AVC curve, okay? And I might note uh, this point right here, minimum AVC, uh, that might be point A, okay? If I could kind of just put an arrow there, make it really clear that big green uh, blob is uh, that dot where minimum AVC is, uh, that's point A. And, you know, really we don't have a point here, but if this curve kept going, you know, we'd be looking at, you know, the rest of that marginal cost curve uh, being uh, B, okay? So if I had to shade it, you know, it's this green line here above um, the minimum ATC, that's the short run uh, supply curve. Okay. All right, everyone. Hope that helped. Have a good rest of the night.